previously on balls. It's just gone 4.13 Central African time and now I do know that that is eight hours ahead of... Where are you, Colorado? Yeah, we're in Colorado, Darren. Denver. Yeah, that's correct. All right, I was right about that. Sorry about the time uh, time zone cock up a no little earlier on, <laughs> Andre. Uh, <laughs> woke, the, woke, woke him and his uh, family up this morning. Um, I'll do it, Maz. Sorry, I'm getting there. It's just this thing's very sensitive. I'm trying to make you as big as possible so everyone can see you. Welcome to Balls Visual Radio. Thank you very much, Darren. <laughs> all right, there's the uh, the beautiful family. It's blondes all round. You're in fact the yeah, darkest of all of the of all of the people there. I know, yeah, I know. The little girl is upstairs at the moment. She's having breakfast in uh, in bed, and uh, she's a blonde as well. So yeah, I guess I'm the darkest one of the family. All right, introduce the family. Right on my uh, on on the left is my wife, Philippa. Hey, Philippa. Hey, how you doing, Darren? All right, and you. And then the, the little man on my lap is Kewen. He's a little boy. He's two and a half years old. Hey, Kewen. Say hello. Say wave. And there then uh, Kira, the, my daughter's upstairs. She'll probably come down just now. And uh, trust me, you can't miss her. <laughs> okay. Now, hold on. How long have you guys been there now? Uh, Darren, it's exactly about a year now. A year and one month, probably. All right. I want to hear Kewen talk. Kewen? Kewen, say hello to Darren. Say hello. How are you? Yeah. How are you? Good knuckles. Good knuckles. Put your hand up, Darren, like you're gonna give him knuckles. There we go. Give him knuckles. Good knuckles. Good knuckles. knuckles. There we go. Give knuckles. me knuckles. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Cute. All right, he's got his big USA top. And so uh, I didn't even know you were in the States, boss. I didn't know when uh, Deborah Kellen from uh, obviously one of, used to work with uh, the Sharks. Uh, gave us a message that when you, we do the sink or whatever the hell happened to and we thought okay well we, we find out from some of our former sportsmen where they are now and then Deb said you must get hold of Andre Stamon because he's in Colorado and I thought what I didn't even know you'd gone yeah no it was uh, it was very quick Darren uh, I mean uh, we were still working and stuff in Durban and the next minute you know I got this phone call email from a friend that used to play here you should actually know him it's um, Sean van Rensburg he used to play for yeah. the Sharks as well yeah and no, he Clint, used to Clint play, yeah, brother, and he yeah. said to me, would I be interested in coaching you? Yeah. And I was like, hell yeah. And uh, the next minute, you know, within a month, I had to pack my stuff and go and left uh, the family behind for two months. And uh, Flipper, uh, you know, graciously packed up the house and sold the business and everything. And uh, and yeah, now we are coaching and it's, it's an absolute fabulous. It's a really good experience. It's a venture for the whole family, which is really nice. Is it a full-time thing, or are you just seeing how it goes, or are you are you at, guys at chopping moment, at the bit to get back? At the moment, it's a it's a I'm I'm based on a subcontract uh, coaching uh, contract, which is only on a Tuesday, Thursday, and then obviously involved in the team on a Saturday. Mm. But I mean, you know, since I've been here, so many doors have opened. I mean, I've really uh, got a good relationship with USA Rugby at the moment. Um, you know, so I'm getting involved on the under 18 and school and university level there. I'm helping coaching there. I go to all their coaching clinics. Um, I'm the head coach for the Sevens uh, team here in Denver as well. So I've got basically two positions uh, as a head coach for the Sevens um, as well as the backline coach for the 15 team. And then I'm also the head coach for the West, the West region of America's uh, Sevens team. So it's, it's, it's pretty much like a, a shamble. I've got like three titles. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's it's interesting, and the the sport is growing at a rapid race. It's un, um, it's unbelievable how the sport is growing. Yeah, well, that, that was one of the questions I was going to get to. I'm just saying, as long as you're getting three salaries, that's fine. Well, that's the problem. The game is still <laughs> amateur. Yeah, um, the players have got to pay their own way around. Oh, really, yeah. you know, pay for their own room accommodation, pay for their own flights. You know, the 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 clubs here are, are I wouldn't say poor. But it's still amateur. I mean, it, it reminds me of the days when I started playing rugby, where you know they they can't even help us with fuel money. You know, wow. so it's. But uh, there are sponsors involved. The club's facility is great. But yeah, I mean, it's hopefully they'll be, they'll be professional in maybe a two years time. There'll be a professional league, but in general, the whole game I don't think is going to be professional, oh, at wow. least for another five six years. But yeah. hopefully, I'm in the country when that happens, and I'm on the boat. So, 
we all hold thumbs. Yeah, that's what the world wants. I think in any sport, they want America to be involved and, and to, to, to take or to, to catch on because then suddenly you're getting the Budweiser money and the Coca-Cola money and all of that stuff yeah. getting in there. Uh, it's it, not a KFC top you're wearing there. Is it some other F- FC? No, no, there? this is a, it's one of my players, uh, GRFC, Glendale Rugby Football Club. Okay. It looks like a... It looks like a fried chicken. It looks like a but, KFC uh, logo, yeah. <laughs> is that a Raptors yeah, top you're wearing there, Philip? Or what's that all about? Isn't that Raptor. Toronto? Isn't it's, it Toronto team? It's the Raptors. It's called the Raptors. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's like the, it's the name with the uh, Glendale Raptors Rugby Club. Oh, so okay. Raptors is our, is our code name, I guess. All right. Okay, so you're wearing the team, the team kit there. Um, all right, I want to do. Uh, I wanted to just find out about uh, because when I was in the states in the early nineties, I met up with a lot of South Africans who did play rugby. Then it seemed to be a lot of chiropractors that were kind of making up a lot of the teams there. The South African chiropractors, for some reason, all ended up playing rugby in the U.S. And a lot of them made up the U.S. Eagles team as well. Yeah, at the moment there's quite a few South Africans. Yeah, especially in Arkansas University, there's quite there's a South African coach there Why as well. Why on earth would and, they go to Arkansas? I know. Don't ask me why, but that's they do go there. They, they've got a South African coach there. There's a South African coach in uh, San Diego. There's a South African coach in Dallas. Um, there's the, we. There's a lot of South African coaches involved here, yeah? um, and then the players. There's quite a few. Like I said, at Arkansas University. There's a, a few. There's probably about six or seven players there. They obviously come over, study, and then they start playing. Um, uh, Palmer, Palmer's got a few South Africans in their team as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, we, we're pretty much all over the country. Uh, and uh, but it's it's a lot of guys that come and study, uh, and then they keep uh, they carry on playing rugby. Then they obviously fall in love with the American Dream girl. They get married, get their green card, and then they stay. So yeah. that's the that's, that's the, the process. I think that happens. Well, what What do you do, Philippa? Um, Darren, I'm actually working for the rugby club. Okay. I'm doing their media liaison for them. I do all their photography. I've just actually become involved with a big, um, uh, the biggest portal for rugby in America called US, uh, Rugby USA or Rugby Mag, I should say. Okay. And I write for them. I do a lot of articles for them. Do a lot of their photography, and I also photograph. So last week we had a test match here. We had. Uh, America playing Georgia, Republic of Georgia, and I photographed the whole game. It was my first test match, nice. uh, photographing Ooh. a test match. I never knew me- grown men could move so fast. My word. Uh-huh. I was so nervous. Who won? Like, oh! You won, <laughs> but, by the uh, way. Um, America did, and they really they really gave uh, Georgia a big running, you know That's what. Good. But you got to understand, we're, we're, we call the mile, Denver's called the Mile House City. We're at 5,280 feet altitude yeah so anybody any team that comes here we've already got any team that's you know that has to come and play us here that's why we like we the division we were the division champions in 2011 and we lost the title two three weeks ago um but anybody who comes up here is going to be sucking air by the by the first by the end of the first half so how did you win the game some, we can't yeah. we, they couldn't like we they couldn't breathe <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens with us is in a game is we typically, our team is known as the second half comeback team. Because yeah. we just sit there in the first half and we wait for everybody to bide their time. And then we come out in the second half and those boys are sucking air through every every hole in their body by the time the second half starts. And our boys just kick in the next gear. And we typically win with a, quite a quite a big margin. So yeah. we'll it's quite send, fun. We'll have to send the, uh, the bulls or uh, maybe send the lions over there. <laughs> What's the altitude of uh, of Joburg and Pretoria? We how far? Like a thousand six hundred meters. Jesus, aren't we? you guys are three times more. Aren't we? Do you know? You've got to be careful there. Don't 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 tell people that's how you win because Paraguay. We're told they're not allowed to have any more home football games because of that very reason. They had such high altitude, no one could breathe when they played them. They kept beating Brazil and Argentina, so FIFA decided no more home games for Paraguay. Nice. So be careful. Oh <laughs> IRB might ban you guys as being a venue for American rugby. Yeah, well, USA Rugby's headquarters are just down the road. They're 45 minutes away, and our rugby stadium is the only municipally owned rugby stadium in America, and we're the only um, rugby club in America that has a facility, and we have a high-altitude training center, not that you need one because we're already at the highest altitude, but we have like a full-on facility at the club. So it's America, USA Rugby's choice of venue to to train. When the, when the Eagles go into camp, they come to our club. And so it's also the venue of choice for, for test matches. 
So we're very spoiled here because we're right at the mecca of American rugby. I mean, we landed really in the in the hornet's nest, if I could use yeah. that terminology, although it isn't the hornet's if nest. You, if you want to go check it out, uh, go to Glendale Rugby, one word, GlendaleRugby.com. All right, cool. We will, and obviously there'll be some pictures and stuff there. So now you guys yeah, live on top of a on top of a, like a, a ski resort mountain or something, or what? No, our closest ski resort is about an hour's drive from here, and then uh, your ski resorts like Vale is about two hours drive, Aspen is about two and a half, maybe three hours drive. So we Damn. we're in the bottom bottom of the. It's called the Front Range. So we're not in the mountains. It's like uh, we're pretty much we're about a twenty minute drive from the. In, then you like hit the mountains, and then once you've hit the mountains, then obviously you get get all your ski resorts, your little towns, and stuff like that. But I would say our closest one is about an hour, hour fifteen minutes away from us. So yeah, it was very interesting this winter, me being on skis for the first time <laughs> in my life. So, so yeah, it was uh, it was quite a, a powder white experience. There we go. Well, it's a, I mean, did you ever think that would, uh, as a as a boy from Dundee, you would end up in uh, down the road never, from all these never. ski resorts yeah, in Colorado? Never, never. Yeah? But you know what? That's that's a beauty about life. That's a beauty about the world. You can travel and explore and see people and meet places and stuff. Yeah. So it's just awesome. I just we we just love it, yeah. Uh, we're very lucky as well because like Simon and I and the team are going to be in Hatfield this weekend. So I mean, as you oh, say, you never know where you're going to end up. Don't you just envy us? us eh? <laughs> <laughs> lucky us. Yeah. Listen, it's really yeah, cool. You, yeah. Sorry, Philip. Okay. You got to come visit us here. You got to come and yes. see it. It's it's amazing. It's it's really nice. Well, if Please, uh, let's go. if what the whole team. Yes, let's all go. Yeah. Okay. Yes, hey, who's, who's paying the dollars? Um, uh, anybody? Hello? Simon? Can you feed ah, ah, Budweiser and just ask if they can just put like $100,000 so we can come visit but, you there? But da- Darren, you know what? Home always remains home for us. We, I can't say we don't pine for South Africa. Where are you from? Uh, the uh, way you said pine, I think you're somewhere from uh, Hillcrest or Kloof. Uh, well, funny enough, I went to Kloof High. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Where are you from originally, Philippa? Oh, well, um, I grew up in, in Kloof and I uh, ended my schooling down in Scottborough. So, um, okay. so I really classify English. myself as a South Coast girl. But um, we're coming home at the end of the year for five weeks because our season is broken up over two seasons, mm. and well, over two periods, what they call the autumn season and then the spring season because there's too much snow here from November, December, and January. Nobody can train. So um, we're going to come home for five weeks and get, let, let the kids experience South Africa because right. they don't really remember very much of it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, hope your golf, I hope your golf swing is in order. I have a golf swing. It's top notch. <laughs> top notch. Do us, do us a favor, Andre. When you come out, bring us one of your jerseys. Yes, please. We can put it up oh. in the studio. Bring us a Glendale, uh, Glendale oh, okay, jersey. Cool. Okay. I'll bring you, I'll bring you and, a jersey. It's, then, it's, I want one of Philip's it's, one. It's actually a, it's a bit of a sore point, though, because they they white and blue hoops like Western yeah. Province. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. That's all right. They're just a little bit bigger. They're just a little bit bigger. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm struggling to get used to the white and the blue stripes. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, <laughs> and then ask uh, Philippa if she'd like to come and do bikini weather on our show. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'll, I'll get it into shape. Don't worry. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> Philippa looks like she's in perfectly good shape, which is why I Scott. wanted yeah. to come and do bikini yeah, weather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. uh, and of course, your heart still lies with the sharks, right? All of you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, we we're very fortunate. Yeah, we've got a the the satellite uh, network here is called Direct TV. And they've got a, a, t- a TV channel specially dedicated to rugby around the world. So uh, on weekends, trust me, you'll find me in front of the TV watching games like the Heineken Cup final. You know, the, the super, all the Super 15 games are being televised. Uh, all the Springbok games are being televised. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, hello. <laughs> we, just, uh, we just thought we'd tell you what bikini weather is all about because we're a visual that's radio station. Right? We don't just do the weather, we do bikini weather. So that Sashka is about to do it in about 10 fine. minutes' time. No, but we, she's indoors. Inside, it's fine. inside it's not too Makes bad. for great viewing, Philippa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Philippa's like, no like way. Yeah. I want to, I want Andre's going to be putting the kid to bed now, and then they're all going to no. be going on to balls <laughs> today in 10 minutes. But, but now, Andre, do you. Every you, now and then, Darren, oh. Andre boots up and uh, strolls the crowds and runs out and gives the boys a bit of a set run to for their money. And in September, he's uh, going to be representing an international select side, if you can call it that, in America at a 
that yeah, big uh, seven, uh, 15th tournament up in Aspen, yeah. and it's quite famous. And Andre is coming, Andre is coming to um, boot yeah. up there in September as an as a international guest star. So he still awesome. boots up. He's still in good condition. Yeah, he looks like he's in good shape still. He's obviously still training hard and uh, staying in, in good nick, which is really cool. Uh, what are we going to ask Simon? I want to ask Andre, do you, have you taken to American football at all? Do you like it? It's crap game. Um, I enjoy watching it. Uh, I must say I'm not Please. a big fan of it. Uh, Slow, eh? For me... Okay, yes, Kira, guys. <laughs> Hello, Kira. Do, have you finished all your homework? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. You see, I'm trying to spot an American accent with the kids. I'm, I, I, I don't, see, I don't hear any. Can you yeah. say hi? Say hi. Uh, she's shy now. <laughs> uh, the American Sweet. football, I mean, it's, 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 it's nice to watch. Um, I just find it very one-dimensional. It's, uh, to me, it's like a game of chess. It's a game played between the coaches, and they've got all these players on the field, and... They play for four seconds and then they stop. You know, and then it's yeah. like a whole reshuffle, new game plan. Play five seconds and then they stop. You know, so, so yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's it's not a it's it's a big showcase. You know, it lasts for like four hours. But um, but yeah, no, I haven't been to a game yet um, because I mean, it's it's just a waste of time for me. Oh, but uh, but I quite enjoy the ice hockey. They play ice hockey, uh, which is really really nice. Oh, that's so uh, fast! Though. How do you track that puck? It's not about the the speed. It's about well, the ice. Well, it is it is quite fast. But I mean, the the, the beauty about it is, if you're a sportsman, you you your eye quickly get to get it. And if you're actually further away from the the arena, it's easier to track the puck. So uh, be but careful how you say that. Anything. <laughs> and then uh, baseball, they've got baseball, yeah, which is quite interesting awesome. as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think American sports are also so. twee, which is why they uh, they win it all because no one else can play them. That's like the World Series. Exactly. They were, they were they world that's, champions that's and everything. What I try to, that's what I try to tell these people. I say to them, listen, guys, you know, you've got all these sports: football, basketball, baseball, ice hockey, all those things. But you can only play against yourself it's because nowhere in the world do they really play it at like a professional level, you know. But rugby makes the world smaller you know i mean yeah. you can if you've got a rugby team you can travel to australia new zealand and you can play top top dollar rugby you know yeah so uh but i mean because i mean it's not like the football players are going to travel to south africa to play football you know it's not going to happen exactly and the well, it would be nice to see a, it'd be nice to see a uh a bulls a bulls against um <laughs> Bulls against the Dallas uh, Cowboys. Who, or something. Who's the big team at the moment? Who's the kind of the San Diego Par uh, San Diego? Uh, what? Chargers. Chargers. I was going to say Padres. The Chargers. Are, who's the big side at the moment? Who won Super Bowl? The, the is it Green Bay? Green Bay Packers. Green, Green Bay. Bay? No. Okay. No, I don't think it was them. But anyway, put the Bulls up against the Green Bay Packers, and we'll see who, who comes out on top. Yeah, no, no, no padding. I mean, I've, I've seen I've seen some of these boys. They are huge, but no they padding. are useless. No I mean, padding. They, they can't, they can't even run 50 yards and they pass out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Andre and Philippa and the family, it's nice to catch up with you guys and all the best Thank in uh, Colorado. Much. And uh, yeah, anything interesting happening out there, let us know. And we'll uh, look forward to Skyping you again sometime soon. Absolutely. Let's just, just, just say goodbye. Come say goodbye. Exactly. Think about that. Bye. 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 There we go. First. Knuckles, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All the best. Look after yourself. <laughs> right, thanks, thanks, Darren. Darren. Bye. Bye. There we go. Andre Bye. Snayman, former Springbok Center, joining us. And he played wing now and again as well. Joining us on Skype. You can't tell it's going to go. To BMG 6 PM Mondays to Fridays, live on balls.co.za.